You are now watching a Lucky Penny Shop product feature. Hey, it's Lucky Penny Shop. Excited to check out another crazy kit for you. Now, I have had this for about a week, maybe a little bit longer, been wanting to do it. But first, let me say thank you. Thank you to you who are watching these videos, supporting the channel. It is really appreciated. Now, if you've come here for the first time and you think this is going to be a five minute video, that is not going to happen because a kit like this, I'm going to imagine now, just guess based on all the kits I've done, this will probably take anybody a half an hour or longer to achieve these results. Now, if you want to just do the kit and not to achieve these results, it can be done quicker. So let me just check out the box. And how many have I done? Well, I've done almost every set that has come out from all different companies. Now, I was looking for instructions. Once I show you the instructions, you will see. This is probably one of the more intense kits. They lay out all the packets here. It looks like you get a spoon. So I think I will have to bring in some toothpicks. I noticed some toothpicks here with these little flags that are going to be cut out. And then, uh, well, let me show you this. I was hunting around, scanning, I mean, uh, translating and trying to find out all the directions here. Even though you can make out most of it like this is three, three cups of water, probably 50 mixes. I thought, hmm, I wonder if anybody has the actual instructions that we can read. So I found these. We'll give them a shout out here because a lot of people ask me, have you ever found English instructions and I did for this set and not for every set and this is from japanfunbox.com so there's a shout out to their website and it is the complete instructions you see three cups 50 they kind of actually scan the box and put the instructions underneath it so that's what I'm going to do I'm not going to open it just yet I'm going to come back grab some water kind of look over the packaging as I open it and officially get started. Okay, here we go. I have some double face tape, some toothpicks, and a pair of scissors. So I'm guessing that's what I need because I did not see those items on the list of items. And uh, let's see. Oh, wash your hands. I believe that's wash your hands. And then have some water. And then maybe read the instructions over. Not sure. Either way, let's get started. And like I said, uh, these steps... Well, I didn't say this, but the initial steps are not in the instructions, okay? They are just based on sets that I've done in the past. And you'll see right away there are little dots, meaning you need to cut this package up to get the stuff you need out of it, like this and this. So let's first do this so we can see the packaging. Let's get this out. Okay. And this, look at all the packs, lots of packs. So yes, it's just a spoon. There's no other cutting tools. The tray and the set. It looks like this is your little cutting board that you can cut out, probably for the french fries. These need to be cut out. They show you right here, see? Glue them to some type of stick or double face tape them or tape them to the stick. And then this right here is the tray. Okay, let me do some of this. Not necessarily your tray, but your plate that you're going to present on. Like I said, if you just want to make this and not go through all this, you can. I do it because my ultimate goal is to try to make it as close to the packaging as possible. And that's why I don't edit any of this out. I've always just done it this way. I just like to talk, hang out. Kind of like doing an art project together, except I'm doing it and you're watching. Now, it would be neat if I can double face tape this down to a piece of heavier cardboard stock because it never seems to sit well on these. Okay, there's our surface for display. And then I have these to cut out. I want to get them both out of this packaging first. 
Well, it's been a long time since I've done a kit with this much to do. I always like to organize my packets. So I'm going to do that after I come back now. I just want to get some pre-cutting out of the way. There's one. Now I they show the dotted lines in further. I'm going to leave them. I'm going to cut the complete thing out. It looks like they might want you to cut a little further in, but I'm just going to go right there and trim. Okay. Now it doesn't say to cut this out, but I'm going to do it anyway. They show it in the picture with the fries. That's why I got a cutting board. Now I have all these things in miniature as well, like real mini cutting boards. Alright, so when I come back, I am, well, let me do this. Let me get the tray cut, because the tray is supposed to be cut in three, two places that I saw. Now, like I said, again, these instructions on all of this are not part of the instructions I found online. Right, I'll have to leave a little bit of that there just to kind of give my knife a little cutting area. And there we go. My cutting board is ready. Okay, cutting board. All right, now this they show you to cut the corner off. That's your measuring uh, for water. And then cut this section out. All right. Now that I have everything out and these items cut, I will organize again. Get things set up a little bit easier for me. Clear up all the paper scraps and then continue on. Okay, a couple things. I like to lay out everything so I have my Mixes in order, I will move them before I actually get started, but there is the egg, the french fries, the shrimp, this is some kind of little center cake, the ketchup, the meatballs, and then the shrimp coating, and then the little candies that go inside your egg, it's making a fold over omelet. And then looking at this, they basically say to put a piece of tape on it, put your toothpick on it and then fold it over. So that's what I'm going to do. I am using this double-sided photo and document tape. I found this at a garage sale, I think it was, and they didn't want much for it, so I thought, well, let's just use it. I mean, I probably paid a quarter for it. I don't know. I don't recall, but here we go. So this is how I will, and I did decide to take my plate and put cardboard behind it. I will show that to you. Okay. Let's just trim that. It didn't fold as nice as I would like, but I think you get the idea there. There is one. So how precise do you want to be? Do you mind that that's not folded perfectly? It's really up to you. You don't have to go through any of these stages. I mean, technically you almost need to get a ruler to make sure where the half folding point is. Okay, so those two are done. So to me, that is step one. So I am set now to actually start the process and I'm going to now move some things out of the way, come back with just this packet, my water, and then probably this tray and the spoon. So let's start with that. Okay, so I will leave that there as a visual aid and uh, move some things out of the way to make it easier. They actually show a little frying pan with the eggs flipping there so you kind of know what's going on. Oh, and by the way, they do give you some good information in regards to what's in the tray and then allergen indication based on the Japanese regulations. So gelatin, milk, soybeans, banana, and uh, here we go. How to make Osama lunch. All right, make it out. That is step one. Pour three measuring cups of water into the omelet mold. Next, add the omelet mix and then mix it well with the spoon. 50 times. This will take 10 minutes to set. So it's, that's why they probably make it step one. Here we go. Three cups 
of water. They give you little indications not to go too low and not to have it bubble over too much. And then they have a little pour spout on these. Here we go. One. Two. It's the big countdown. And three. There you go. All right. Get in there, little drop that fell. There you go. All right. I almost want to cut the sides down a little so you have... You're not working over the edge. And it's good to sometimes give these a little, you know, shake to get the powder down. And then I usually cut them. You can just rip them apart, but sometimes I feel like I'm going to push and it's just going to go everywhere. And that won't bode too well in a video, will it? Okay, here we go. This is basically making my scrambled eggs. Now, did you see there was a little face down there? When this sets, I'll flip it over and show you. It smells very much like lemony. Or... Let me see. Something like that. I can't say exactly yet. Okay, so here we go. Now that at least is set, here we go, 50 times. I mean, it's hard to measure 50. I think they're just trying to say, make sure you give it a good mixing. Don't you think so? Okay, I know it's going to seem odd, but I'll take a break here now. I'll get set up for the next steps. I think we got it pretty good. Okay, so now that needs to set. And then now we'll move on to the next step. Okay, next step. Now it is the french fries. You will see a little french fry on the outside of the packet. It says... Pour one measuring cup of water into the clover um, clover leaf tray. I don't know if you can see it. I don't want to lift it too much, but inside here is a clover. And then one measuring cup of water. Add the French fry mix and then mix it while pressing lightly with a spoon. Once it is set, move it to the mold and press it with your fingers to flatten it out. Remove the corners gently from the mold and place the French fries on the cutting board on the lunch plate. Cut the french fries along the zigzags with the spoon. Okay, so they're not saying bring in another knife or whatever. I guess the spoon is good for cutting along the zigzag. All right, this packet is ready. Okay, one cup of water into the tray. And now mix the french fries. So this is going to make more of a dough. Here, let me bring this a little bit, a little bit in more and up. You're not as much seeing my whole hand. Well, that sure wasn't slow. Okay, here we go. I like to hold the tray because sometimes these things bounce around. It does say that if it's too uh, tip, when it when it's difficult to mix, add a little extra water. But I'm not going to do that, and I think we're pretty good. I don't think I'm having an issue. You want it to be dough-like and pressed up against, like it says. And the reason I leave this in is because you're kind of seeing the whole process, the change over the minute or so it takes me to mix and to talk, you know, how it's working. Maybe it's going to be a little different for you or you see something different. It's close to being a solid mixed ball. 
Okay, I think we're pretty good there. I should be able to press this in now to here. Doesn't say mix it in your hand. I can't wait to do the meatballs. The meatballs, it says once it is set, move it in the mold and press it with your fingers. The meatballs you get to make with your hand. And there's no microwaving with this kit, so it's all done just with everything like this. This looks like his setup already. So I'm just working my way around all the different edges and corners to make sure it's flat. Okay, so next I need to grab my other supplies and we'll pop this out and cut it. So let me get set up for that. Okay, I did put this on some white cardboard to give me a little stiffer place to move things around. It's hard to move on that sheet so this is all set. I just basically double face taped around it and stuck it down. See it still will peel up it just you know we'll see. All right so now it says take it out of the mold. So I just figured hey, a toothpick would really make this handy. Okay and then cut along these lines to make your french fries. It specifically said use your spoon, so I'm gonna do it that way. Instead of bringing in another knife. Here, how about I do this? I will turn this this way. I'm gonna put the fries like they have in the picture They're over on this side. one is, I believe, the little shrimp. Okay, so we're going to build this up. I'll reorganize them as we proceed here and I get closer to my final presentation because that's what I look forward to doing, that final placement Okay, next step is the shrimp. So now I can move that easily out of the way. So let's move on to that next step. All right, next is the shrimp. Now let me show you, even in the molded plastic, uh, you should be able to see it. There's a little fish head there with an eye and he's smiling. You can kind of see it on this side too. And then that is the actual mold. Now I can show you the back side of this because that is set the egg. So you have a smiley face omelet, and then this is a rice mixture, it's called, it's called the rice, uh, chicken rice. And here you can see the clover a little bit better too, because that's the tray I'm going to do next. All right, pour one measuring cup of water into the clover tray. Next, add the shrimp mix and stir until well mixed. Here we go. One measuring cup. So now I, each time I kind of have to clean that out, because you're going to use that multiple times. go. Let's get this right there in the center. You need a third hand in here holding this so you can mix it. Now it does say this takes five minutes to set so once it's mixed you don't have a ton of time.
It looks like it's all holding together pretty good. All right, this goes in the shrimp. I'm smelling something almost sour. Oh no, actually, it's like an orange. Yeah, it smells like orange. Okay, so this goes in here. say press with your hand smooth out the surface that's all it says it doesn't say hand or spoon so I'm gonna use see if it sticks to me or not it's not sticking to me but still I'm not getting a good press okay Let's move on to the next step. I gotta let that stand for five minutes. So let me do that and I'll move on to the next step. Okay, here we go. Make the chicken rice, it's called. Two cups of water. Well, let me get this cut first. And you can see on the outside is this molded shape here with the two flags and three of the little candy beads on it. So that's the mold, it's got a little star. And of course the flags I showed you earlier. So let's get, these, let's get this cut open. So pour two measuring cups of water into the tray. Next, add the chicken rice and mix it well while pressing lightly with the spoon. Once it is set, remove it from the tray and knead it 30 times with your palms. Okay, here we go, two scoops. Thirty times, ooh, okay. There's a lot in that one. By the way, that shrimp is already set. It looks pretty, pretty much ready to go, I think. Here, let's look at that up close from this angle. How's that? Smells good. It smells like bubble gum. Ooh, get back here. You're not ready. I think the kneading in your palm is really just to be rolling in your palms to create the heat, which will also help kind of stick it together. I'd say it's pretty good. And this is why you need clean hands. Yeah, it feels like, um, I don't know, it's not even a dough that's really solid. Here, maybe I can pick up some of those extra little granules. I'm kind of pushing and turning I'm not kneading, you know, like you're kneading like that, but it's kind of pushing and turning, and it seems the heat from my hands is what's causing it now to be really nice. Okay, I didn't count, I lost track. Talking too much. Squeeze it with your palms, squeeze it in. That's what it says, squeeze it in. And when you're ready, just press the tray from the bottom and pop it out. Now I kind of see like a little star in a circle there. Let's just look from the bottom and see. Okay, I get it. Let's just plop it right here, see if it's ready. Nice. Perfect, that's the centerpiece of everything. Okay. It's nice, we are proceeding along. Next is making the ketchup. 
So that gets mixed in the bag. But what I'll do is I'll clean this tray out because I think I might need it one more time. And then I will do the ketchup. Okay, here we go. This is the ketchup. You can see a little ketchup bottle there. And then the corner where you cut later. And there's three numbers. One is the cut line. Two and three are the fold lines. I left the meatballs out. I'm hoping I can just go right into that because it's all one particular process. So they say put it in the tray and let it just stand up there. Hey, that's nice. And then cut along. Okay, measure two. Pour two measuring cups of water in the bag and mix it well with the spoon. There is one. There is two. I believe the ketchup is like a tomato sauce, I would guess, with meatballs. I think now I'm going to hold it in my hand. So I could see in the bag. This probably does have to set a little. It's another nice smell. I don't know if it's strawberry, but it kind of has that smell to it. Okay, I think I got my corners pretty good. Okay. Make sure you thoroughly mix. Remove the bag from the tray and fold along the lines. I've already taken out of the tray. So fold two and fold three. And eventually I will cut that. All right, so I can move on to the next step. It seems like it should be pretty straightforward. Making the meatballs. Pour wasn't one measuring cup of water to the tray there that we've been using for all the mixing. Add the meatball mix and stir until it is well mixed. Okay, here we go. One measuring cup. The only thing I need to do is to wipe off my spoon. That's another step I have been doing this whole time, is trying to keep that clean. You may wonder what I've been using to clean my tray. Well, I've been using a Q-tip. It works really well. You don't have to really spend much time. Okay, now. Next one. Time to make the meatballs. Now this is also picked up with your hands. See if I can see better this way. So I was wondering if it'd be easier to cut down that edge. Now this gets divided in half. Let's see, it says divide the mixture in half. Forming them into balls. Once the balls are done, place them in the tray. Cut off the bottom corner of the mix. It does say roll them. So form it in your hand, or break it into two, and then roll it in your hands. This smells somewhat chocolatey. Okay, meatball number one. I want that with it. So roll it in your hands. I'm going to give it a little more mixing here. Okay, number one. I still see a few little granules of powder in there, but I think we're going to just leave it. I see them on this too.
Okay, once the balls are done, place them in the tray. Okay, in this tray where we were. One. Cut off the corner of the ketchup mix bag with the scissors and pour half of the contents into the meatballs. Roll the meatballs with the spoons. With the spoon, not spoons. It's a tiny, tiny corner we're cutting. Half. Ooh, how do you know what half is? Hold on. I got some powder there. It's so hard to mix. That's the tiny, tiny corner. There we go. There was a little bit of powder in there. Let's just assume that is half. I guess the whole idea is to just coat them up. We get a little more. I think you only need a little bit more to decorate the face on the omelet, so. Okay. Now what do I do with them? It just it doesn't say to do anything with them, so let me figure out the next step. I believe it's almost ready to do the to do the uh, omelet, so I think that's next. Okay, moving right along, those meatballs look really good. Now I have extra ketchup, so it's hard to really tell when you're squeezing and squishing, so I reworked it around, I realize there's more in there. I will put it on the meatballs in a little bit, probably closer to final presentation. So they want me to get the egg out by using my spoon. There's no refrigeration here, so you're just kind of going with it the way it is. It looks really floppy. Okay, so they want this on the plate. Hmm. Uh, it is, it's very pudding-like. But it's still holding its shape. It says push the spoon underneath. Make sure I get all those edges up. Okay, ooh. There we go. Let's do some work here on this. Let's get these piled up more like french fries. Let's move this. Okay, there we go. A little off the plate, but I will make more room. Let's get this in position. And it's kind of, you know, in front of that. So now we need the little candy beads. It says, move the both edges of the mountain tray, gently insert the spoon between the tray and the omelet, and place the omelet on the lunch plate. Done. Place half of the vegetables, which is the candy chocolate, on one side of the omelet. Fold, oops. Fold the other side of the omelet to wrap the vegetables. They actually say warp but that could be part of translating. Let's get these little beads out. Okay. There's my veggies. Mmm, the veggie omelet. I'll need a few for that ending. Well, let's just get this omelet loaded up. Okay, you all stay there. Now I'll flip this over. There is a smiley there believe it or not. Okay, so I do have room, so I'm gonna move this all in now. Okay, I think the next thing now is prepping the fried shrimp. So let's do that next. Okay, update. I am going to actually wait because I want to wash this tray out. So I'm gonna take my meatballs and place them. Okay, because they want the smiley face done now. There's one eye. Nice perforated eyeball. And then the next one. And then a smiley. This might be challenging, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, he looks mad. Now I can go wash this. Because I need these two trays for the next step. Okay, it's all taking shape. 
Now they say the shrimp, which is like a coating, like a breading, goes in this tray and then four cups of water in that tray and do not mix. You are not supposed to mix that. It's like a wet dry. So you wet and then you dry and then you wet and then you dry. It says three or four times. And look, there's even like little crispy things in there. Let's check this out a little bit closer here. You see them in there? It's like little flakes that haven't totally powderized yet. And then four scoops of water. Two. Three and four. I'm always worried like I'll hit the edge or spill it into the next section. Remove the shrimp from the mold and hold its tail. Okay. It seems like it's set up pretty good. Yeah, it has. Hold its tail. Roll over the shrimp from left to right in the mold. Okay. Press the batter against the shrimp. Avoid dipping the shrimp in the in the water too much. Roll them. Next, roll over again in the omelet mold. Repeat this process two or three times. So it doesn't say tip one, roll them. And okay, it shows the water first, so oh it actually just shows the dry first. Let's see. I don't think it matters. You just want to get the the process going here. And then roll it in here just a little. And then you just roll it back here. Oh, look at that, see? It's making a nice coating. Two or three times, all right? Oh, it's starting to crackle. Do you hear it crackling? Try to get away from me. Listen, here, I'll put it up here. That is really cool. I think I want to do this though. I want a nice looking breading. All right, this will be my last time. It has become really slippery. That's a nice looking breaded shrimp, isn't it? Just clean it up just a little. I think I get the process now. Okay. What next? Okay, next, uh, remove the shrimp from the mold. Okay, did that, did that. So decoration, all right. Let me move this. Let me just pat that on a little bit. It looks pretty cool. There we go, nice breading. Let's put you there, little shrimp. You're looking good. Listen to the crackle. Here, let me put some of this in here. I know you're not supposed to, but I want to hear it crackle more. Listen. It's like it's frying. That is cool. All right, so I'm done with that. My smiley face is done. Here, I'll show you their end picture so you can kind of see. Their ketchup looks a little more runny. Shrimp looks just like my shrimp. Fries look good. Meatballs have a little more coating, so I will have to remove this out of here, and then I will come back now and do some final prepping here. Okay, almost done. Now, a couple things. One, they show you that it is dry and crumbly on the top, so I think we have that look. It has a almost a hard texture to it. They also show you, you could decorate your little smiley face any way you want. You could put a heart, little design, there's a little heart eye. So now I need to get some of these candies on the top. I'm going to go for exactly the way they show it, three green ones. And I'm definitely going to try and taste everything for you so you can understand what it's like. I was smelling all different kinds of things. Two. And three. Okay. Now my little flag. The 
this one. And then I said I promised you I'd put some more ketchup on these, which I'm going to do now, just to kind of let it sit on the top. This would probably be good for the fries. So what I want to do now, I think I'm all set. I'm going to snap a quick picture of it so you can see it in the thumbnail. And then I'm going to come back now. I think I got it all. I'll review everything. Simple enough. And uh, get, oh, wait, they show these around the plate. Just some just interspersed. They won't stay on because it doesn't have edges. Okay, I will be right back and give it a taste. Okay, here we go. It is time to try each component piece. I will be as accurate as possible to see if I can get an actual flavor. Let us try a meatball, a roly-poly meatball. First, let's just cut it like we're cutting a meatball. Lots of extra ketchup on the top. So you can see inside. Like I said, this one kind of smelled chocolatey to me. Here we go. It's gooey. Not gooey like a like a gooey candy, but it's not as hard as a gummy, so it's real soft. All right, let's try a French fry. I get a really strong flavor with this, less than this, but it does have a hint of chocolate to it. So that's what I'm tasting. Here's a French fry. It's very almost uh, lemony, melony. When you bite it, you get a little crisp of the sugar. Nice. Okay. I'm just going to bite the shrimp. It was still crackling a second ago. Let's see if we get a good crunchy sound. Mmm, you do. It's crackling in my mouth. Listen. Also tastes orange to me. That one tastes orange. All right. Now, the omelet. It's still crackling in my mouth. Very cool candy. Now, this one seems somewhat gooey, doesn't it? Here we go. That was my elbow, by the way. Now, the omelet. It tastes like a bubblegummy cotton candy, nice and sweet. Texture is that, it's kind of gooey. Now this was chicken, chicken something. Here we go. The last taste. Again. Tastes very much like, ooh, my omelet just opened up. Like a bubble gum. I don't know if that's a cross flavor. But overall, I'm going to say, it was pretty fun. Took a little bit longer than a lot of kits that I've done. This is one of those kits that will take you time if you want to try to achieve this. I would say overall, I got pretty close. And thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, looking at the description on the playlist there. And let me know what you thought. Would you try all of these like I just did? I want to know. And thanks for watching. Later. If you're looking for the item you just saw in the video, click here. Watch more videos by clicking here. Don't forget to share on social media and give a thumbs up. Hey, LPS Dave. What's up, Butch? Make sure they don't forget to subscribe. Oh, yeah. Please click here to subscribe to Lucky Penny Shop. And always remember when you see a lucky penny, pick it up.